Hello everybody, it's Tom, welcome back. So um, I've been um, watching a few YouTube videos uh, regarding most played records, and I watched a few from uh, Fitz Electric Bar and Mazzy and a few others, and I got inspired, so I'm gonna do the same. It's pretty hard to um, really gauge how many times you've listened to a record, so I'm really just going on what I really reach for, you know, semi-frequently or frequently that I that I love to play that I've been playing for either years or the past 10 years or you know so I just kind of uh, chose like around a dozen random records that I do play on a semi-regular basis and some I just are I guess you could call them uh, comfort food records right that you just want to put on they put you in that right frame of mind and so uh, anyway so the first one I thought of when uh, thinking about this was uh, Steely Dan's Pretzel Logic this one here I have played, I don't even know how many times I've played this, hundreds of times. Um, it's definitely my favorite Steely Dan album. It's the first Steely Dan album I ever bought. I bought this back in uh, 1977 at Licorice Pizza uh, on Topanga Canyon in Windows Hills, California. And uh, throughout the years, it's just, it's just been always on the turntable. It's just a flawless record with a lot of great styles. Um, you know, it just it has it has probably some of the shortest Steely Dan songs, but some of my absolute favorites like Berry Town, Any Major Dude Will Tell You, uh, even odd tunes like Through with Buzz are cool. And then you've got you know the epic uh, title track Pretzel Logic, With a Gun, uh, Monkey in Your Soul, uh, Charlie Freak, of course Ricky Don't Lose That Number. It's just a perfect album for me, and it's short. It's relatively short, and um, I just. Periodically, I just always want to listen to this. It just always puts me in the right frame of mind. So that's probably one of my most listened to records of all time. Another one is by uh, this group called Hatfield in the North. Uh, this is their second record. They only put out two records. This is called The Rotters Club. And this would be uh, kind of categorized as jazz fusion or, you know, prog rock. Uh, this is a, a group that came out of the Canterbury scene along with like after like uh, Soft Machine and uh, Caravan. In fact, uh, Richard Sinclair, who was in Caravan, is the lead singer and bass player on this record, along with Phil Miller, who is just an absolute genius on guitar. And you've got Dave Stewart on electric piano and Hammond and uh, Pip Pyle on drums. And this is really... Um, a really unusual, really unique record that takes me to a really fine place, um, which really gives it weight for me are these three backup vocalists, Barbara Gaskin, Amanda Parsons, and Ann Rosenthal. Periodically throughout the album, they add these really soft, angelic voices. It's like they're like angels singing. And uh, it just complements the songs. And it, it, unless you hear the record, it's really hard to describe this record. It's complex, yet it's very accessible. Um, it's very infectious. The playing is very complicated. Uh, the lyrics are really absurd on purpose. They don't take themselves seriously in the lyric department like a lot of other prog rock bands did, like Yes, even though I love Yes. But um, you know, there's really complex, complex arrangements of playing, very melodic, very atmospheric. Um, and I just always reach for this. There's a, there's a, a long track on side two called Mumps which starts out with the three female backup vocalists and they kind of covered what the melody is going to be in the song, the main melody. And then the instruments come in and they kind of start playing that melody and they go and do their jamming and, and their uh, and their thing. And then it comes back to that melody at the end. It's this gorgeous melody at the end with all the instruments playing. It's just an amazing record. Um, the first track on side one called Share It could have almost been a pop single. It's so catchy. But uh, I, I always reach for this, and I've been playing this for decades. I think it's one of my absolute favorite prog rock records. And it's so different than any other prog rock record. They also had an album before this, you know, self-titled Hatfield and North. That's really good, too. But this one is an absolute masterpiece, five-star record. So this is one of my most played uh, called The Rotters Club by Hatfield and the North. And then absolutely one of my all-time favorite uh, albums and also played albums is uh, Rubber Soul. Um, <laughs> what is this? Okay, so this album here is the U.S. version, and it's a perfect record. And it's always, uh, it seems like it's always the Beatles album I reach to first, this along with Revolver and The First Sight of Help when I want to listen to the Beatles. It always puts me in a just a perfect mood, like a lot of Beatles records do. And um, I always love the, uh, the American version with I've Just Seen a Face. 
starting side one, and it's only love starting side two. But I played this hundreds upon hundreds of times since I was a child. Another album that I have played incessantly over the years, especially side one and side two, is Genesis, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Incredible prog rock record. Side one and two, though, are they don't they're not full of like these long, drawn out epic songs. They're actually short, more short, compacted songs, but played with just such versatility and um, feel. Uh, I think this album has Peter Gabriel's, some of Peter Gabriel's greatest vocals and Phil Collins' best drumming. In fact, the whole entire band is just on fire on this record. I think they're at the top of their game. Uh, the title track is epic, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, uh, Fly in a Windshield, the way that kicks in, Broadway Melody of 74, Cuckoo Cocoon, uh, In the Cage and the Grand Parade of Lifeless Packaging on side one, side two with Back in New York City, and this wonderful um, instrumental, uh, Hairless Heart, Going into Counting on t counting and counting in Time, uh, uh, also, uh, The Carpet Crawlers and The Chamber of 32 Doors. It's just, side one and two are just perfect. Side three and four are a little more theatrical. I love those sides. I love the whole album, but I always, always tend to go with side one and two quite a bit. And it always takes, takes me to a really good place. So this is a definitely most played record. Uh, Lamb Lays Down on Broadway from Genesis from 74, one of the all-time greats. Another one, too, that I've, the past maybe 25 years I've really listened to a lot is uh, There Are But Four Small Faces by The Small Faces. This is their first album for Immediate. Uh, I think I mentioned this in my 1967 video, Top Albums. But for some reason, I always go back to this record a lot. I love Ichiku Park and Tin Soldier. Those songs are just phenomenal singles. But there's a lot of other great stuff on here. Uh, their way, their uh, version of My Way of Giving, which Rod Stewart later, later covered on Gasoline Alley, is phenomenal. Uh, you've got uh, Here Comes the Nice, a, a song about drugs. Get Yourself Together, a song that the Jam later covered. It's just a great feel-good record with the amazing vocals of Steve Marriott. And when it comes to jazz, uh, I play more jazz than I do a lot of pop these days and rock. But this one is one of my most played jazz albums. It's uh, jazz guitarist Pat Martino. Uh, the album Joyous Lake came out in 1976. Just an amazing player. He doesn't really sound like anybody else. He died a few years ago. Um, but uh, he has a plethora of great records, this being one. Another one called Desperado from 1970 is great. But this album just has really infectious, melodic playing and great tracks. So this is probably one of my most played jazz records, Pat Martino, Joyous Lake. Another album I always reach for because I'm a huge Kinks fan is, I don't know, and I don't even know why it's this particular one, but I play this one all the time. It always puts me in a good mood. Lola vs. Power Man and the Money Ground Part 1. I played this hundreds upon hundreds of times. I bought this album uh, back in probably 1973-74 at a Hughes Market in Canoga Park, California. I think it was only $2 in the uh, cutout bin. And I pleaded with my mom to buy it for me. She did, along with all the groceries and the fried chicken and all that stuff. But uh, since then, I've, it's probably one of my most played Kinks albums. It's, it's definitely in my top three of all time Kinks albums, but there's something empowering about this album, about uh, Ray just plowing through the music industry and getting through all the hoops. And uh, me being a musician myself, I can understand the issues with the music industry how difficult it is and and just all the lying and all the um just all the shit that can go wrong basically so um, i love this album it just flows well has some of the greatest songs played it hundreds of times one of my most played records another one i always reach for when i want a little pick me up is um and i always i play this one along with rasmin vibration this one is one of my most played albums kaya by bob marley and the whalers just a really great, easygoing album, uh, starting off with Easy Skanking, the title track, Kaya. Of course, it has Is This Love, which was on Legend, a huge, uh, huge popular song. Satisfy My Soul as well. Um, ends with Time Will Tell, Some great lyrics. Always puts me in a great mood. And then um, one record I've been listening to a lot the past 30 years is this group called Lush. They're a shoegaze band from the 90s. This is... Uh, Kind of a compilation of three, a, a couple of EPs and a mini album on one record. So this was their first uh, release in the U.S. called Gala. And I got to tell you, this album really takes you somewhere. Um, 
Mickey Bereni and uh, Emma Anderson are the vocalists and singers and songwriters. I think uh, Emma writes most of the tunes, but um, uh, Mickey has the most angelic voice. And when Mickey and Emma's voice blend together, it, they're just like angels. But the music's chimey, but it's kind of harsh sounding. Kind of has kind of a My Bloody Valentine vibe, but maybe not as harsh. But it's kind of dirty, chimey sounds with these just beautiful, angelic voices with these really well-written songs. Um, there's a song on here called Thought Forms. There's a couple of versions. The, the fast version is absolutely amazing. Um, another, another great song is Scarlet. The whole album, I listened to it last night. It just takes me somewhere. And I think this belongs in one of the greatest shoegaze albums of all time. The atmosphere is just out of this world. Songs are just amazing. And it doesn't sound dated, it just always sounds amazing. So that's one I play quite a bit. Uh, Lush Gala is the name. And then uh, another one I have listened to so much the past, since this thing came out in the early 90s, is the Star Time box set from James Brown. If you ever want to pick me up, or this is it. This is it. This is like a, this could be a cure for depression if you continually play this for days on end. Um, it's so uplifting. And it just, um, it just has this um, kind of empowering vibe about it. James Brown was truly an original, and his band was one of the most kick-ass bands of all time. Uh, it's amazing when you listen to these songs that they're not playing from a metronome. Uh, 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 CDs three and two and three are the ones I play the most. The ones with Cold Sweat, Mother Popcorn, um, uh, you know, all those hits. From like 67 68 69 i can never get enough of this record it just always picks me up it's not really even a record it's a box set but i had to include it because i've played it so much it's one of my all-time favorites and then a current one that i've listened to a lot the past couple years and i've mentioned it in other videos is the debut from judy sill this is um an amazing record by a very tragic figure uh, there is a movie coming out. I'm really eagerly awaiting for its, its release. It's called uh, Lost Angel. And I keep looking on the web to see when it's going to be released. Maybe they haven't had a, uh, a distributor yet. But this is a lost gem. that, And it's the first album ever released from Asylum. And her singing, arrangements, harmonies, just what she puts, what she puts in just to a single verse is amazing, vocally and melodically. Uh, there's so many great songs. There's not a bad track on here. It's absolutely, when you get done listening to this, it gives you the greatest feeling you can imagine. And uh, I had to put it in here because I've been playing it incessantly for the past couple of years. I discovered it uh, just maybe back in 2021, 2020. And um, it was like discovering uh, a, a treasure chest. So if you haven't heard this record, I highly recommend it. It's now becoming one of my absolute favorite records of all time and my most played. So. That's pretty much it, folks. Um, I could mention more, but those are just the ones that came to mind. And um, anyway, I thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.